kill you. Or get themselves killed trying. I can't let that happen. You can't stop it. As Lee Marvin and Charles Bronson have aged, their appeal has grown by leaps and bounds. I ask them how they feel today when they see themselves as the psychotic thugs they used to play in the 50s. I don't know. That's what, you know, I have no regrets about those. Do you, Charlie? It's hard I did, for me to answer you? that question because I, I didn't even, some of them I hadn't even seen for the first time yet. I remember things As like, therefore, like, therefore, you know, I'm not going to go back to look at them. I wouldn't know. I remember things like Crime Wave, where you, uh, you did in the veterinarian. Crime that Wave. was really a menacing. Now, that uh, picture that we shot in eight days, picture. you see. Yeah. Yeah, those fast schedules. Eight days. I suppose Steve's told you all about his college friends and their pranks. We don't talk about that place. I don't blame you. If I had a baby doll like this. Shut up. Even in the pen, they couldn't teach him manners. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why I left the joint. Charlie and I were young men, a very young men at one time. And if you got a part when you're very young, you, you are limited by your experience. <laughs> I'll fix you in your pretty face. Oh, Vince, he scalded. She had it coming. Don't just stay there. Get it to a doctor. You'll have to make a police report. That's why we're sending you. Go on, get moving. We've run. And as you naturally mature, I'm sure that we hope that the mind is going along with the body. And so as you grow, uh, keep growing, you, you, I hope you get smarter than dumber. So I think that's why you see these facets later in life than early in life. One thing that I find very interesting about your career, Charlie, is you actually, when you began, uh, you were playing under your uh, real name. And a lot of actors have changed, changed names before they uh, got into the business. But you must have at some point decided that you needed to, uh, to change your name. Did it really help to... Uh, who knows? The reason I changed the name is I was pushed by yeah. two people, an ex-wife and an agent. And during that time, McCarthy was very popular. And he was hunting reds and also representing Russia in this country. It was Vyshinsky, and my name was Bushinsky, so it sounded so much alike. And uh, Hollywood was running scared, and they weren't hiring people who had a name like Bushinsky if you know what I mean. They were afraid. They were afraid that maybe they might be chosen to be, you know, put under the microscope by McCarthyism. And so I thought, what the hell? Change my name. And what about the tough guy image? Bronson often plays tough as nail killers, but he usually manages to give them an unspoken sense of compassion just beneath the surface. If you're carrying the picture, you have to put in, you have to make yourself a sympathetic character. Somebody has to be rooted for. And in pictures like The Mechanic, there's nobody else to root for, you see. So you have to give them some sympathy, some sympathy in the character that they can root for. Otherwise, you've lost them completely. And not only that, you see, each, each, each heavy that exists in the entire world, human, has sympathy in them. And they all don't show it, but it's there. And the characters that I play, I show them. Yeah, right. Now, that's never noticed. I'm surprised you noticed it. But it's, it's noticed. Know, he also it's has, I know, it's I he also has many notice. other phases in his character, you know. Uh, I mean, a, a killer or a thief or whatever. They're not just straight black. I've, I've just been elated with the films that both of you have been making uh, lately, even things like Telephone, The Big Red One. Oh, thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much for taking thank the time you. to talk. Thank you. Say hello to the folks in Oregon. 